welcome everyone you're welcome a warm welcome to you all thank you so much for joining us on today's edition of the winning in parenting conference that started yesterday and you know it was nothing short of amazing we had um three great sessions that were premium value packed i mean we had so many aha moments we had so many takeaways and we had so many moments where we were mind blown i'm so excited at um what is going on here and i know that today's sessions will be very expository as well okay so we are going right in but before we go on um i'm just going to say a word of prayer in honor of God, Father, we thank you for bringing us back here today again. We thank you because you are the one that has inspired this conference uh, to be put together. And Father, we ask that you will take preeminent control of everything that we're going to do here this afternoon in Jesus' name. We declare this day open in the name of the Father of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. So I'm just going to go ahead to play our intro and then we get right to it. Thank you so much for joining us. If you know anyone that needs to be here, please forward this video to them, share the link to your tribe so that we can There's an outpouring of abundance, of abundance, new doors have been opened. Green, a new grace has been released. The glory, the glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here, it's all here. Lift up your hands, come on. The glory of the latter. Is greater than the former, the blessing is here. It's all here. All here. There's another flow. Abundance of
Welcome back. Sorry about that um, glitch. So I guess it's here already and I'm going to be uh, putting up her profile so that we can get right to it. So here we go. Adebola Adefioye, the child expert, has a degree in psychology, which inspired her work with children with neurodevelopmental disorders such as autism and other related disorders. She is a Montessori trained educator, professionally licensed to work with individuals with special needs. She's done several courses in applied behavioral analysis. She's trained in TEACCH techniques and an advanced certified autism specialist from the International Board of Credentialing and Continuing Education Standards. With over 19 years experience, Adebola believes each child can thrive given the right tools and environment. Adebola took courses in nutrition because of her belief in the importance of diet in working with individuals with neurodevelopmental disorders and led to the opening of her other business, Fruity Art, which also teaches fruit carving as a form of therapy to individuals with learning disabilities. It's a fruit company based in Lagos, Nigeria, that has taught over 1,000 children and young adults emotional intelligence, increased their intelligence quotient, and developed their life skills using fruit art. Adebola has authored I Believe I Speak, a 30-day devotional for children with neurodevelopmental challenges. She is also the convener of Help Me Be Me conference, a conference specifically for special needs. She runs Child Expert, a company that offers assessment, behavior modification, nutrition, school integration, among others, to individuals with neurodevelopmental disorders. She volunteers with several NGOs during her spare time. Adebola is an AWE alumni, a U.S. government initiative, the current vice president of the Alumni Association. She's also the current social director of the National Fegi Cola Alumni Association. Adebola Adefiyoye. Welcome, welcome back. Um, welcome back. Um, okay, you're welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. So good to have you here. And thank you for having me too. Well, uh, I may. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the last time you was October last year. I remember your session had uh, the most highest number of views. I know that <laughs> a lot of parents are struggling today um, to raise special needs children. It's actually mm -hmm. not a water park. I mean, raising, you know, um, children on the other side, all right, is not an easy fit. And then when we now... Um. Is it your network or mine? Um, there's a bit of glitch somewhere. So, Dodar, is it your network or is mine? Because it's like I can't hear anything. If anybody can hear me. Wow, our environment is blessed. Let's not say anything else. The um, should I say the technicalities or the hazards? Oh, like she's gone off the hazards of 
the virtual industry in Nigeria is still very beautiful. Let's not say any other thing. But I believe that we'll get better and better over the time. So we'll just wait for her to come back on because I'm not sure whether I'm supposed to start yet or not. Um, I, I know my session today is speaking on my topic. The topic given to me is helping a special needs child thrive in today's world. That's my topic for today. And I know I have, um, I think, 40 minutes to speak and also to take questions if there are any. I really, this is, um, I don't know where the questions are going to come in. So I was hoping that you would explain and tell us where when what is so maybe we'll just hold on for a few minutes for her and then okay she's back i think oh she's gone off again About that that was um, a network glitch from here oh okay 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 sorry about that can you hear me yes i can hear you though you keep it's like network is hanging it's yes, glitching okay, so, so i would just um, leave you so that you can get right into it okay okay yeah. that's yeah. beautiful that's um, power. Do it? yes thank you very okay. much yeah you're welcome, ma'am. Okay, like I said, my topic for today is helping a special needs child thrive in today's world. And I'm sure we, a lot of us know what special needs is. We've heard over and over, we keep hearing about it and all that. So in a few lines, I'm just going to define what special needs is. A special needs child is one who's who's been determined to require special attention or additional requirements to function in his or everyday life. What do I mean by everyday life? In school, at home, in church, or any religious setting that he or she is that needs special attention. Now, what do I mean? Um, you need to make, um, um, how would I explain it now? You need to make alterations to certain things to accommodate such children. Yeah, to what, that's what it means to be a special person. So um, I keep hearing a lot of parents say special needs and all that. And I try to explain to people that, all of us are special in one way or the other. It's just in varying degrees. Like for me, I might have issues with mathematics. That makes me special in math. I need extra help. I need people to sit down with me to, to teach me math properly. So I can say that, but I, I function beautifully well in other areas. So I might not have um, my needs, my ability, what I need is not so much. So that's fine with me. So that's why I always try to explain that <clears throat> we are all special in our different ways but the ability to function in a like in a conditioned environment wherever it is is what makes the, what makes the difference in each way now what are the people when we say how does it, how to, how to help them thrive in today's world there are people that can help them any child or adults because right now we have a lot of adults that are you know what can help um, sorry, I, I think I missed my line of thought there. There are stakeholders that help an individual function well. And who are the stakeholders? We have parents, we have the extended family, we have the environment. When I say the environment, I mean neighbors. We have the school, we have religious settings, as either your church or the mosque, or depending on which religious um, affiliation that you under. And then we have the government, and then we have health centers hospitals clinics and all that so i'm going to be taking them one after the other so that i know um, so each person knows what role they are supposed to play in helping a child with special needs thrive in the environment like i said there are different there are different areas each person can work but as the parents of the child the parents overlap in every way because you relate with all these areas you will relate with the school you relate with extended family, you relate with the neighbors, you relate with everything. So the parents would function as it would double in, in all these areas because they are the primary 
um, contact. I always call them the safe haven for the child. So that's what I'm going to talk about. So we'll start with the parents, the role of the parent in helping a child with special needs thrive in the environment, in, in society, in today's world. Now, we know that a lot of times the parents are, like I said, they're the first contact. And it's always sometimes a bit difficult, especially when you hear the diagnosis or you see that there's something strange or different about my child. So a lot of times the parents go through the stage when they first hear the awareness stage, then the denial stage, then the acceptance stage. People get to it in different ways. Like I always say, the mother is always the first to notice. Oftentimes, most of the people I have worked with, I've come to realize that it's always the mother that suspects first. They go like, there's something, this child is not reaching milestones early. There's something, there's something, there's something. They, they're not able to put a voice to it until they get help. And once they get help, they grow through the stage, why me? Why, why, all, why is all this happening? But once they accept, once they get to the acceptance stage, they're like, okay, now what next? So the question now is, what do you need to know? How, how do you work with your child? How can you make your child independent enough to be able to function in where, whatever environment he or she finds herself? And the first thing I need to know, we need to know the severity of the need of that child, the challenge. How bad is it? How mild is it? How high is it? As is, all those are all the things the parameters would use to determine what help the child needs. Let me give an example. A child on the aut autism spectrum, we working now because it's a wide range, no two children on the spectrum are the same. But I would use for so that we would all understand what I mean. I'll use high functioning and low functioning. But those terms are not used anymore. But for so that for understanding for easy um, for, for you guys to understand easily, I'll use high functioning and low functioning. When I say high function, that's a child that is on the spectrum, but can do a lot of things himself, can eat, can learn, can, can do everything, just needs a bit of help. But the child that is low needs a lot of help, needs, probably needs help to learn how to eat, how to write, how to sit, needs all the basic therapies to start, like you're teaching the child from the beginning. So that child that is low would need more help than a child that is on the high on the higher spectrum. So those are, like I said, those are the things that we need to come to find out first. How high or how severe is the challenge of the child? That is what would help the parents know what kind of help the child needs. Now, so let's use um, a child that is mildly, um, that is mild and all that. So in a way the child can function properly in, in a given environment. Those are kids that you see that they just come, you know, they, they, you see them, they're probably uncomfortable. They have a bit of sensitivities. Some of them, like on, on the spectrum, you have kids that are high or high, they, they are hypo or, or hyper. When you say hyper, that means they're very, they're, their sensitivity is very high. Hypo is it's kind of like low. An example is to touch someone, a child that is sensitive to touch, doesn't like you touching them. Some fabrics irritate them. They, that's when you see them always want to take off clothes of their bodies because their sensitivity to, to fabric, so, to certain types of fabric, irritates them. So it, it can trigger off some things about them. That's one. Some are very sensitive to noise, depending. So some are very, like they enter a place and then you talk and then it's like your voice is times 20. It's like there's a lot of noise playing in their heads. So there's some, some like that. There's some that are very sensitive to temperature. So it's, if it's extremely cold, they react. If it's extremely warm, they react. So like I said, everything is it's not cast in stone. You need to find out what exactly obtains with your child and know how to help your child. It, let me give an example. A child that you know that has sensitivity to noise. How do you help that child as a parent? You buy noise cancelling earphones for the child. So because you know that anytime the child goes out, Especially in our terrain here, there's a lot of noise. The, if, if it's not bus drivers that are making noise, VRT drivers, it, it's cars honking, there's so much noise. So to help that child, the best thing is to get the child um, noise cancelling earphones. That's always on the child's ears. So that when even get, he gets to a noisy environment, because the earphones are on, he can sit down normally and not misbehave. I use the word misbehave in quotes because parents always say that when they see kids when they see children with special needs act up they think that they are misbehaving so it's not technically it's it's their way of reacting to the sudden change for them the um the um i'm trying to find the right word i don't want to use too much technical terms so that we can all understand so like i said so because you know that you know your child's difficulty you modulate you do you create accommodations for the child to be able to function in any society so even when the child is going to school because the, the school now nah, i've moved a bit i've moved i'm talking about school also 
you you would have spoke up like when the child gets to a school you would have found out about the school are they are they accommodative are they an inclusive school though we have a lot of inclusive schools in quotes now in lagos or in nigeria but you need to also ask your questions because a lot of schools that say they are inclusive are not exactly inclusive. They just ask them, that's the reigning term now to so everybody. So you need to ask questions. This is my child's challenge. This is what my child needs. Can you help the child? You need to come to school, educate, um, tell the school about your child because nobody knows your child really better than you. So you're going to have to help the school. So once the school knows that, they know that, okay, this child has an issue with noise. So most times, if they can't do a lot, they'll probably um, try and take him off assembly ground where they know that there's probably going to be a lot of drumming or marching or noise and all that. So they try to accommodate that child. They try to um, regulate that's the word, regulate the environment so that the child does not react in court to, to noise or to whatever it is that itches the child. A child that has sensitivity to, to fabric, you find the best fabrics for those child. So you know that maybe it's cotton or it, um, it's wool that imitates the child. In that, as a parent, you will not do anything that has to do with wool. You will not allow that child to wear because, you know, that triggers a lot of things. Then some of them too are smells. It's, it's a wide range of things that trigger them. So as a parent, your first thing is to understudy your child. Know what your child needs. Know how you can help your child. Then you can educate the masses. You can educate the school. You can educate the church. You can educate your immediate family. And yes, so that's the role of the parent as a stakeholder in helping a child thrive with special needs in today's world. Now, when, when I talk about extended family, because yes, we are, we, 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 are, um, we have a lot of, our family, in, in this part of the world, we have our families together. We're always together. If it's not function, someone is living in someone's house, or we're always, they're always, we're always a part of each other's life. So they also need to understand how to work and learn how to deal with your child. An example, imagine you go to your, your, your sister's house, or your parents house with your child and you not explain what is wrong with your child or that your child there's something uh, there's something wrong with them. this child is this and, all, and you've not told them anything you suddenly take them to the house imagine you go on a day whereby there's a party in the house and your child doesn't like noise you, do, you maybe you forget to take his earphones or something and there's a loud party your child in quote begins to he know he goes to the first before they even start to like throw tantrums in court they first tell you, mommy, the noise, or you hear them trying to cover their ears or something, trying to show that this thing is, something is wrong. But because you're probably not sensitive or you're like thinking that it would, it's just, it, you're trying to wish it away. When the child can't un bear it anymore, he starts to, either some of them rock, some of them flap, some of them run around, or some of them even go to the source of the noise to try to pull it off, try to like either reduce it or just to, because they want to get it off by all means, it's an example I would give you, a child that reacts to noise. For you and I, it's like there's a trailer honking right in your ears. You know how uncomfortable you'll be? You'll, no, you'll probably just walk away like, what's all this noise? But for a child that has a, a need or a challenge, it's difficult for them to express their their pain or the or the thing it does to them. So they like they just, they try to react. And that's it. So you need to explain to your family also. You need, let them, you need to carry them along. They need to know what it is that is wrong. They need to know how to help your child. They need to see the signs that, okay, this child is, okay, this is wrong. Something is wrong. We need to help the child find a, a safe place immediately so that he doesn't react. So you need to carry your family along. Your family's members need to know what you know. You need to educate them. You need to teach them. That okay, maybe my son. Okay, there's someone just came in with a strong smell. The smell is he's reacting to the smell. Is either we take him out to take a breath of fresh air or we move him away from the person. So we always make accommodations for those kids. That's that's the role of the extended family. Also, your neighbors, too, especially if you stay in a, maybe in an environment that is close knit or you guys are like your friendly neighbors and they have kids too. You know how it is. Like I always tell people, kids are very truthful. They tell even children especially children on, on the spectrum, they are very honest. They tell you, the, they, they, they don't know how to, to smile or joke. They just say the truth. So kids, are, to a very large extent, they are very truthful. They'll tell you the truth. Well, there's something wrong with that child. I don't want to play with him. But when you carry their families along and they know what is wrong, you would even say that it will be the kids that, the other kids that will be advocating for your child. Be, ah, oh, there's something wrong with social person. Hi, ah, he doesn't like noise. Please, let's not make noise. Or he doesn't like to eat this thing. Or this smell is irritating him. Or They are quick to help. So it's, it's, it takes the burden off you because one, you've taught them how to, how to work with your child. 
and you've also educated them. So they not only are they, are they, do, they, do they know for themselves, they also advocate for your child. So in peradventure, you're not at home. And then one day your child steps out of the house or you're probably even at home and you didn't even know. It's your name, it's other people that can say, oh, this is why I, he's working. Don't, this is why, let's help him, let's help him. Because they know. So you need to carry everybody along. So you need to carry your family, your neighbors, and then school, I have explained about school. I have, um, I'm going to use an example of someone I know who's been having challenges with the child's school because yes, they say the school is inclusive, but there's a lot of challenges with the child. And that's because they're not, there's not like I explained earlier, there's no one solution to every child. Every child is unique. Like a child that has cerebral palsy that probably isn't working yet, we don't have the same need with a child with cerebral palsy that is working. So in each, each child's need needs to be tailored. There's no general um, accommodations for all the children. No, each one is peculiar. So a child that's not like in a school that a child um, you have a child with cerebral palsy and is not working. How do you help that child? If let's assume the child's class is upstairs, what the school can do because they know there's a stress, there's a challenge. They can bring this child's class downstairs to the ground floor to accommodate that child. So there has to be accommodations on both sides. So once the school knows about it, okay, I have a child that has cerebral palsy, have a child that has Down syndrome, I have a child that has autism, I have a child that has um, um, hydrocephalus, whatever the need of the child, the school needs to know. And it's something that you need to clearly spell out. One of the things that the school also needs to do for you as a parent is and create an IEP for your child. An IEP is an individualized educational plan whereby child, the child's method of learning is explained to both you, the school knows about it, their therapist there, the teacher, everybody's coming together to find the appropriate way of teaching your child. Like another example I give is some kids on the spectrum do not like to write. The, the process of holding a pen, it's a lot of stress for them. So they do not, they rather work with tabs. But because we have, we're the traditional educationists or schools in Nigeria, a lot of them, a lot of schools still insist on writing. And it's a lot of, stress for the children so we always ask what's the what's the most important thing is the child what we want to do, achieve is for a child to learn how the child does it, how the child learn is it learns is irrelevant what do i mean a child wants you want your child to go to school and learn fine you want him to learn maybe his numbers his alphabets and all if he can learn it using a tab why do we need to use a blackboard why do we need to use paper and biro? Yes, it's there's there's a connection between writing and your and developing develop some development of some skills. I totally agree. I know I'm not disputing that, but not every child would write. And funny enough, we're even getting to a dispensation or a generation whereby everything is on your system. A series, you are talking, series responding. You don't even have to write in some cases. So why do we need to make those kids write? It's not important. We need to move with the trends. So if your child says, if you see that your child doesn't like to write, then you go to the school and explain to the school, you know what, I don't need my child to write. I don't need him to write with a pencil. There's a tab for him or her. Let him do all his work, all the assignments to be put on tabs and all that. So those are not, those are the some of the old, um, uh, um, accommodations. Also school food too. There's some kids that will probably not eat the regular meals everybody will eat. They would have regular special diets. The school too also needs to, you need to also inform the school. Okay, my child doesn't eat this. My child doesn't eat that. Do I have to bring my child's food? Or can the school menu accommodate this? I don't mind paying extra. There has to be a conversation for each person and then school bus too okay my, i want my child to go with school bus but my child because it doesn't like too much touching is it possible that the child is put in the in, in, into the so it's not a crowded bus do i need to pay extra everything can be negotiated there has to be a balance everything would be talked about so that the school knows about it so, so that when the child is in probably going home and in the school bus and everybody is questioning the child the child isn't reacting isn't crying isn't shouting and everybody tags the child as a naughty child or a rebellious child and all that is the name tags we don't we don't want because what like i say these kids know when we do not like them or are impatient with them or like want to like push them away they sense all these things so they become in quotes um I could say rebellious, yes, we could say that, but it's not because they're rebellious, it's because they they expect you to know and understand certain things about them until we are able to meet them at their own level. 
before all these things can work out, before we can help them to thrive, we can before we can make them thrive in themselves and in the environment. So it's every, even like I explained, I've come to realize that anytime I go to school with parents and we are doing school integration for children, my first part of call point of call is the students, the children in the class. I explain, oh, um, hello everybody, this is David. David is coming to your class. David has a need, and they're like, hey, okay, okay. And so I'm like, ask me any question about David. So someone, like, why he's not David is not working now. This is a random name. It's not any. I'm just I jump, I'm just using the random name. So they go, why isn't David working? Oh, David, when David was born, something happened. So like, ha, ha, will he ever work? I was like, yes, okay. So what can we do? That you want, okay, uh, David, we need him to, maybe he has a standing frame. We need him to stand on this frame for 20 minutes in class. They're like, okay, uh, should we, we'll help you remind the teacher. They are, the other two children are, you know, they, they want to help because they see that this person would get better. So you would even see people, okay, uh, okay. Would they ask questions like, uh, if, if I touch David, hope he would, what is wrong with him will not, will not catch me. You say, no, it's not contagious. It's just if, um, a development, a, a, new, a, a neural thing. That is wrong with his brain. So sometimes when you talk to David, David might not understand early, but so you need to, you don't shout at David. You need to tell, speak to him softly or you need to write it down or you need to show a child that needs picture cards picture cues you need to show him pictures so when you talk that okay david it's time to eat you show him a card that has someone that is eating so that david can understand so the work is even easier for the teacher because at every point in time even the children you keep them saying ah ma it's time for david to eat ah ma it's time for david to stand on his something it's everybody's it's a it's a it, everybody's doing it together so the teacher is not overwhelmed so when it maybe the child is um the teacher is tired this he can you will find there'll be people together so i say this the students in the class are the first part of all once the students understand it then you now move to the teacher and explain okay this is it this and all that so it's easier everybody's on the same page the class to the students the class teacher the um, the drivers of the school everybody is doing all the work together so it just makes it beautiful that that's on the part of of school now let's move to religious setting yeah we know that a lot of times we see people come to church and we're not so easily um, i use the word i don't want to use the word accommodating because now I think there's a lot of awareness going on so parents are people are becoming aware and we have some religious church some churches some places being more open being more accepting or some will just openly ignore and we also have some children churches that are now more open to their their noise is reduced when they see a, a, a child with adhd they are able to help the child they hold him around and all that to just help the child um, function properly we've also we, i've also had a lot of clients that do not want to go to church because their kids are labeled they're tagged that oh that child never you know and all but we really can't keep these kids at home if we want them to try. We need to help them become as in independent as they can be. What do I mean? If you check yes, the first few times you would go to church with the child, yes, it's people would stare. We're, that's how we are in this part of the world. People would stare. Some of them that are bold enough would probably ask, what's wrong? Is there something wrong? Or they, you know, say things behind and all. But because you're one, you're your child's first advocate, so you need to educate the people staring. You need to also educate the church and help the child be better enough to say what he or she needs, help them to know. So you would tell them what they, okay, my child in this class is in this class. Sometimes he will do this. Please allow him. When it seems as if you can't handle him, please call me. I'll explain to you what you need to do. So when you do that first time, second time, third time, they will get a hang of it. They would even ask you questions. Okay, this is what we noticed about this person in, school, in, 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 in class today. Um, have you noticed it before? What can we do? Some do that. And then now these days, like I said, for a church setting, the best thing you can get your child that has issues with noise is a noise counseling, um, a noise counseling headphone. That's the best that you can do. For a child with cerebral palsy that is probably not working, you have a wheelchair that you can wheel the chair into church. And some of them that can move, they move on their seats. Those of them that have standing frames because you can't allow your child to stand all through the service. So we'd always encourage that the, stand, the standing frame should stay at home or in school, but your wheelchair should come around with you. And then the churches can make can make accommodations, do ramps. 
instead of all steps because we've noticed a lot of churches have steps and don't have ramps so a church that is like um upward thinking or is moving with the times would provide ramps for your children so that at any point in time the child can go you're not you're not going to church and you're worrying how would i get this child to to um to church and sometimes too some churches that don't have ramps would help you they have like men or um like people in secure um, um those people that park cars or ushers or protocols that would help you carry your child so they assist you to show that okay come we may not have the basic facilities that um, to accommodate your child but we are willing to learn we're willing to help you so they help you along the way so you also like i said you need to educate them let them know the, what it is that is wrong with the child and you've often a lot of times i found out that once the church that you attend is open it's easier an example was we used to have a boy in my church and he came to I'd, I'd never seen him that was my first time of seeing him in church his mom was a bit so apparently i hadn't been working in children's church with the few times he had come so that sunday when he came to church he's a bit verbal but you need to he takes his his time to speak so you have to like really wait for him so i was taking a class of if i remember i think the class um, that class was six to eight i think it was six to eight year old kids that were in that class yes so i was taking taking them the class so he were already in the middle of the class when the boy walks in because they all know him immediately he walked in all of them started smiling and sm smirking and moving away so when i i was like what's wrong i'm trying to remember the boy's name i don't remember anymore i was like what's wrong they were like oh, nothing uh, nothing man nothing man nothing man but i knew i knew what had happened so i didn't say anything so i woke up and i was like hello come and sit down you know so they were all looking at me one kind of nonsense. so the boy sat down so immediately he sat down, the person by his side just jumped up and went to sit down beside someone else. So I was like, okay, obviously we need a, a class on a um, uh, on being, and I, I need to advocate for this boy. So I, I was like, well, you know what, we're not going to do this topic anymore. We're going to change the topic. We're going to talk about the love of Jesus. And you're like, oh, why? Why am I sorry for you? Why? I was like, no, I just want to, I want to teach something. And also, like, okay, no problem. What do you understand by the love of Christ? You know, so say explaining, we should love one another. We should do this. We should do that. And I was like, okay. So when it came, I was like, okay, now, that do you think this boy? Now let me give him a name, Femi. Do you think Femi is um, God's creation? They're like, yes, yes, God created him. God created him. I was like, beautiful. That's very nice. They're like, okay. So why did all of you run away when he entered? Because so why were you laughing or something? You know, they looked at me one kind of like eh, something is wrong with him can't you see him see his mouth is always open he's always bringing out speed they shall describe the boy as best as they could and like i said kids are always very truthful they described him in as best as they could with some gory explanations and was when i allowed them to finish i was like, okay so what do you think is wrong with you? Like, hey, they don't know. We just ah, that smith is one kind. We don't want him to touch us. We don't want him to give us what is wrong with him. I know. I was like, ah. so I called. I called Femi. I was like, Femi, come. You know, he came, hugged me. You know, so you could see the shock on your face. Hey, and all that. So I was laughing, and I was like, so I, I told him to sit down by my side. I told them, I was like, I told someone, please get me food for him and all that. So they got there and they saw him eating. So like, you know, so they were looking, hey, so he can eat him by himself. Ha, ah, see, you know, they were saying all sorts and I was laughing. So when I finished, I now told myself, okay, you know what? That, so I now explained what was wrong with him. I was like, okay, I don't know because I don't have a full diagnosis of it, but I think this is what is wrong with him. That I think that maybe when he was born, something went wrong and all that. And I asked him, I was like, okay, let's assume when you were a baby now, maybe when you fell down and this kind of thing, like, ha, ah, you know, I, I had to explain. I did a breakdown of what was wrong with the, with him. And, you know, before the class end, uh, ended that day, all the kids were hugging him. They were wanting to offer something to him. Come and sit down by my side. Because like I said, he was drooling. So when his handkerchief falls to the ground, someone help him pick him, help him clean his mouth. It was a humbling feeling seeing it is, is a set of kids one minute they were ostracizing the boy and the next minute they were loving him you know if you see the smile on the boy's face you know so he kept trying to say thank you you know it was it was amazing the change even the boys were saying it even the other kids were saying see he smile see i'm smiling so i was like see if you will just extend the love of jesus to someone else you would see how it is today the story has changed they look for him in church when his mom sometimes when the mom comes doesn't come with him they ask them you see them his other classmates ask him and this person didn't come to school this person didn't come to school and um, to church because someone took time to explain to them and that's what we keep saying for any child with special needs to thrive there has to be awareness there has to be education and the first person to do that is the parent 
the mother or the father of the child. You need to educate us. You need to prepare our minds. You need to teach us. You need to explain to us what it is that is wrong with your child. You cannot afford to be ashamed of your child and think that we would we, we would show empathy. No, on, you need to carry us along. Once we know what it is and you can tell us conveniently, we would follow suit. It's how, have you noticed, when you see beggars on the road, the same way the pitiful look and all that, that's how we treat them. But when you see a child in a place that even has a special need, probably, and is neatly dressed, looking fine, you know, you, the way we look at them is different from the way we'll see a beggar that is funnily dressed outside. That's how it is. It's, they say you are, you, are, you are dressed the way you're dressed. So when you, when you the parents, are the major stakeholder in the life of your child, teach us how to do it. It is easier for us to follow suit with you. Another person I want to talk about is the government. For the part of the world we live in, the world, even if our government is not taking care of, taking in quote, taking care of typical people, how much people with special needs. So I will still say that we leave the government a little bit. Yes, we can demand, we can, that's what we do. We, we do awareness, we do works, we, we go to the government, we try and ask them to change policies. But pending the time those policies are enacted, pending the time those policies are, are, um, are, are done, are carried out, what do we need to do? We make the best of the situation we have. We create everything. In this part of the world, we, we get our water, our power, like everything, we do it ourselves. So we can as well, we should as well know at the back of our minds that anything that would accommodate our children is going to be up to us. That would, it's us that we're the ones that would determine how we want it. And then now it seems like sometimes all the things I've been saying, you probably think, ah, it's so expensive. How can I, how can I afford it? It's not really so expensive. As a parent, let's assume you can't afford a special needs school. You can teach your child at home yourself. There are so many opportunities. You can teach your child how to count. You can teach colors. You can teach so many things with the things you have in your house. You can use matches. You can use shoes. You can use clothes. Anything anything sensory anything you can you use sand you use straw you use gari you use rice you use stones anything you just need to think out of the box to be able to help your child it doesn't have to cost you so much it doesn't like you want to count like now you can to teach shapes or to teach height depth width all you have to do is buy get empty bottles empty but there are different kinds of empty all these are um pet bottles they are the small ones, they are the long ones, they are the fat ones, they are the thin ones. Once we get that together, we don't have to get all the monetary materials. No, we use whatever it is. You can't, like I said, using shoes to, to identify colors. If you have black shoes, if you have brown shoes, those are two colors you've taught. If you have green shoes, if you have yellow shoes, that's four colors. It doesn't have to be a color palette. It doesn't have to, and then you can go on the internet. You can print all these things and show your children. You just need to find call, um, if cost-effective ways to work with your children. For those that can't that can't afford to go to probably a, 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 an inclusive school with all the benefits, because we know that in this part of the world, yes, they're very expensive. And another thing is therapy. Therapy for your child, depending on the on your child. It's a child that needs um, physiotherapy, that needs occupational therapy, that needs speech therapy. If it's too expensive, you can get a group of people. There are associations, there are groups, there are support groups that organize these things. That you can bring, a, like maybe five of you that stay in an area or two of you that stay in an area. You can team up together and get a speech therapist that would, would work with all your children at the same time. That So let's assume a speech therapist charges, let's say, 10,000 per hour. When it's Maybe when there's a group of you coming, to, when there's a group of you coming together, you can negotiate a, ch a cheaper deal. He has more people, and he's not moving from one place to the It's one place that he's going to do. Though so yes, it's different children, but it's one place. So the cost of moving from one place to to two five people, he's in a that person is in one spot. So everything has to do it. You need to be versatile. You need to actually think about the box because. For children with special needs, each of we all they all need therapy. Therapy to be able to function appropriately. That issue of therapy can't be emphasized. I and I always advise if you know that you are kind of you are at the beginning, you can't afford a therapy right now. You can start small. Start with um start with what you can do at home. Get um you're teaching you're trying to teach your child how to sit, 
the child doesn't have um, coordination the child, for a child that has cerebral, using cerebral palsy as an example here. Yeah. And you, you know that you need the standing frame. What can you do? Get a regular chair and get fabric wrapper and tie the child to the chair. You won't make it tight enough, but because you want the child to be in the standing position or a sitting position for a number of times, you strap the child there. The child you time maybe is like maybe in the hospital they told you uh, the person has to the child has to sit for thirty minutes so you time it okay you put the child sitting down and you put toys in front of the child the child that's that's therapy that you have done in your house without having to pay anybody because you were watching in the hospital because sometimes this general hospital they do once a month therapy and all that once a month therapy can't help your child to be able to gain independence to be able to thrive. You need constant therapy that you, the mother, or whoever it is, anybody that is around you, that is helping you with the therapy that can help you. You know, so there are so many ways we can help them. It's what is important is independence. The way we get there is not the issue. Like I, another way is in the Murtala Mohammed International Airport is that in Ikecha. Someone coming from Lekki will go through the um, Tuan Milan Bridge, get to Maryland. Um, I'm sorry, yes, so, so yes, you can either go through Maryland, um, um, Mobalaji Bank Antony Way, and go all that way. Another person can come from there, go straight to Oshodi, and come back to Osola Way, to, as in to um, Ajawa State Road, and straight down. Someone coming from Ojodu can, can go through Seven Up and go through Maryland. So, there are so many ways to get to the airport. Ultimately, our destination is the airport. And that's the same way. Our destination is getting our children, our special needs children, to thrive. However we are able to achieve it is not the point. My way my, is different from another person's way because my child is peculiar. So I just need to find out what the needs of my child are. How do I help the child? Who are my stakeholders in helping my child achieve success? Who are the people that are going to come together with me to achieve independence for my child? And then I teach them, I explain to them, this is what my child needs. This is how we're going to go about this. And then it keeps, you know, it becomes easier. The burden is easier. It's not only me doing it. So ultimately, first thing is you need to find, agree that something is wrong. There's a challenge. My child needs help. Once you've gotten to that point, then we can now begin to find various ways to help my child. There's no, there's no, there's no, if you can afford to get, to get all the tools, beautiful, it's fine. If you cannot afford to get it, then you improvise. We know wheelchairs are expensive. There are people that are making wheelchairs now. And it's not all wheelchairs that work. So you need to know what's wrong with because there's some wheelchairs that don't help the, um, the, um, don't help the body or should I say the physical structure of the child, of the child that needs it. So you need to know. Get help. Yes, the help might it might take long in comments, especially when you go to all these general hospitals and all that. But one, that's where all like the consultants are. So you get once you know what the issue is, and they're giving you all that you need, then you can now begin to improvise. Find this, ask questions, do research, ask the, like there's this, you know, but saying that the person that asks for direction does not get missing. So when you keep asking, sometimes the doctor can say, "Your own is even there's nothing wrong with your child." Don't worry, it's it's there's nothing wrong with asking questions. They don't they don't they don't beat or fight anybody for asking questions. It's just safer. It's safer to ask. It's safer to get knowledge. For any child to thrive, in you knowledge is first, and then help is second, and then three, bringing everybody on board everybody that can help you and those are the people that have listed the, your extended family your neighbors your friends the church the school because the early beginning of most importantly the early beginning of a child's life is first we start with this, the immediate environment with the family then we go to school for the better part of the child's life with school is parents school parents school and the, um, the environment people they interact with those are the people that all of you must come together and once the child develops independent, yes, the ch your child will make mistakes. Your child, there might be, sometimes there might be accidents, but let's not be quick to condemn yourself, condemn yourself or the school, because everybody's striving to do it best. Ultimately, it's, it's, it's all of us coming together. Accidents would happen at home. Accidents would happen in school. But because one accident has happened doesn't mean we lock the child home and we're too afraid. No, we can't because it's like we, we set the child back. So we need to also help the child. Help the child. Okay, 
yeah normally when a child when there's an accident the kids are always afraid they're afraid to to do it again out of fear but we need to constantly reassure them same way we'll deal with typical child when your typical child falls down maybe he's running and falls down do we tell him never to run again no we don't we probably help him clean the feet or the leg that he got injured bandages and say don't worry you'll be fine next time you know so we help them it's the same way yes where we we, we we feel more um, more attached to a child with special needs we are worried but like can this child function but they are still children they are still human beings that have the same emotions that you and i have so to a certain extent we need to leave them we need to help them make some of these mistakes we need to help them be better so that they can become independent so or whatever tool that we need to help them with we make it available we can we either buy or we make or we get and then now these days because like i said these support groups some of them begin to do batters okay your child needs um, your child has gone through a um, standing frame now your child can stand can i can i, I uh, my child has, um, has um, had had um, his hands cognition is better this were the tools i used okay this one can we switch can i give you this and then you take that to make it easier so i don't have to buy a standing frame for my child because that's the stage the child is in so we keep we keep finding ways to help one another out we keep finding ways to help that child become a better person so um in all i hope i, I um, were able to get one or two things from all okay and one point i need um, i forgot to talk about what are the hospitals yes a lot of our hospitals are do not do not are not are special needs children friendly because one we have few personnel that attend to them so sometimes when we go to the hospitals we're tired from having to wait and wait and wait i remember one time when i used to try and do awareness in some hospitals and after i finished talking thinking that they would have attended to them sometimes they are there for hours sometimes they're even there the whole day and still do not get to see any 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 doctor so what what can i and what best advice is the any time maybe let's assume like i said yes it's not one uh, there's no one size fits all solution to everybody but when you go to the hospitals and because they first give before they start attending they first give like general talk please listen ask questions now i'm talking about general hospitals not private hospitals ask questions ask whatever question that you can ask my child okay last time when i came here my child could sit i've noticed that now he's not sitting very well he's still sitting to the side and all that what can i do to the child they would explain because even sometimes when you get to the doctor sometimes the doctor is tired after seeing so many patients he may not be able to answer all your questions but when there's, there, there's that general talking initially it's easier because the person is still fresh so the person is talking and asking questions and i'm sorry explaining and answering your questions so we ask maximize what we can what we have we will not at least for now we don't have the best situations so the situation we have like you say one when the desire is not available the available becomes desired yes that's how it is we do not have um we don't have um 50 doctors to 50 children no we probably have 100 children to one doctor or 1000 children to one doctor so how many of them would have time to that so we need to maximize what we have ask all the questions ask the nurses on duty they would yes they would know you after what they see him like ah madam has come again but ultimately, what's our goal? Ensuring that our children try. Ensuring that we help our children become the best they can be in wherever it is they find themselves. So we, everybody must come together. We, the parents, the school, the, um, the environment, the neighbors, everybody. And we create this, like I said, we create these tools. Therapy, nutrition, those are basic things that we need, that we need, we can do to help our children. Therapy can't be overemphasized. It, they are different for like i said they are different forms of therapy there's physio there's um there's occupational there's speech there's behavioral each whichever one sometimes they, they, they overlap you need all of them um, different ones per time some it might just be one that you need a child might just need speech therapy and a bit of behavioral a child may need physio speech occupational everything together but you can balance it and then some because in this part of the world we do not have so many specialists we see some specialists overlapping as what do i mean if someone that is doing behavioral can do speech someone that is doing physio can do ot so it's not we don't have the perfect scenario but with this little scenario we have we can we can um, manipulate it 
to work best for us. We can manipulate it to, to, to suit us per time, per, um, per stage that your child is in. So thank you. I think I can take questions now. If we have questions. Thank you so much. Um, that was so, so, so good. Like there was so much to unpack from everything you said. And we really appreciate this time you spent with us. Uh, do we have questions? Uh, okay, so this is the first time we're actually having a session at this time. We usually do oh, late things. So, okay. uh, and people keep chatting me uh, at the back end that um, you know they're going to uh, catch on with the re catch up with the replay. Yes. So okay. um, okay. even if we don't have questions for now, we will definitely have these questions posted uh, in the comments section, okay. and thank you. definitely reach out to you. Thank you it's so wonderful. much. So, as in, there were lots of things that stood out for me. You know, we said um, how the child learns is irrelevant so long as the child learns. You know, we say they are special needs children, and so um, there's no one size fits all. You know, yeah, when mm -hmm. their learning style, you can't uh, put them in a box. So, like you said, it's just best you observe the child as the parent, you know, the child best you know, observe the child and, you know, see what works. And you also said, um, you said something very profound as well. You said, um, these children can't be kept at home. Even though you may end up feeling embarrassed in some way, but if you're looking at the end goal you have for that child, you would want to take the child out, you know, so that also part of how they can thrive because keeping them locked up in the house will do them no good at all no good. I also said as a parent you are the major stakeholder in your child's life so it really begins with you first instead of sitting down to cry and say oh why do you have this kind of child you know it's time to get up take the bull by the horn and say you know what even if this child is this way i'm going to see to it that he or she becomes the best they can be. Yeah. And said, from everything you said, and I also mentioned something like that at the beginning, when we're talking about special needs children, we can't underestimate the power of support, synergy. Yeah. It is not a journey to walk or to go on alone. You said something about, you know, the child being in class and probably he's not cooperating. And as the parents, you would have told the teacher, okay, when he's acting this way, just call me. I'll tell you what to do. I mean, so that's a synergy between the home, the parent, and mm -hmm. the class mm -hmm. teacher or the school. You know, so this is really um, a reawakening for everyone that might be um, raising a special needs child. Mm -hmm. All yeah. hope is not lost. All right, these children can still thrive. They can still be the best versions of themselves. <laughs> Support is very important. You know, she talked about therapy. If you can't afford therapy one-to-one, uh, -one, you can do group therapy. There are so many things, you know, that you can leverage on that can help. She said something very profound, maximize what you have. And you can also manipulate the things you have at your disposal <laughs> to see that that child thrives anyhow thank you so much adebola such thank a great you. time it was always thank um, you thank you to our wonderful viewers i hope you got value from this session i did and i know that everyone that will be catching up with the replay will um get this much value as well so let me release our guest her handle is child expert i'm going to put it on I'm going to put it on. So please go follow her on Instagram. And if you want to do consultations with her, please um, just go to her Instagram and you would um, see where you can reach her from. Or you can send me a message. I'll give you her direct contact. Thank you so much, Adebola. Thank you for doing You're this welcome. with us. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Mom. Thank you very much, Mom. Have Any a wonderful evening. Any final words for us? Or... Okay. Um. Yeah. Final. Final word is like you said, when 
when someone has a child with special needs, there's no there's no manual for that. Nobody has a manual. It just happens. Like we always say, life happens to each of us in different ways. So it's okay to cry. It's okay to 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 ask God why, because God is your father. It's okay to do that. But you don't stay there. You get up and you're like, okay, Lord, I might not know why. I might not even understand why. But just give me wisdom to be able to take each day, each day at a time. So that that's my final word. It's there's no there's no manual for that. You take each day as it comes. Sometimes there are good days. There's sometimes there are ex- exciting days. You're like, oh my goodness, my child is doing fine. And sometimes like there's you you can't even see anything. Mm. But most importantly, you it's okay to sometimes you know what sit down and say I need to breathe. I don't even want to do anything. It's mm. okay to do that. Nobody is going to quit because your mental health is also very important. You need yeah. to be fit to be able to take care of a child that has special needs. Mm. So that's what I'm going to encourage. There's no manual for it. You take each day as it comes. You take time to relax sometimes. You take time to breathe. It's all part of the journey. So mm. well done. I say well done to any anybody, whether father or mother that has a special need child. It's a lot of work. Yeah. We do not believe you are super women and super dads. Mm. And God... Only God can reward each of you. And then as your child achieves milestones, the joy that emanates from your heart can't be quantified. So I say, well done, well done, well done. Thank you very much, Mrs. Zuladari, for this opportunity wow. also. God bless you. You're doing something great. God Thank bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you big time. Thank you very much. All right. So let me release you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, that was so good. That was a lot of information. Ah, kudos to every parent raising special needs children. Um, you are not alone. And, you know, like our guest said, there's so much support out there. Just that some people don't know how to access this support system. But... I think that is something that um, you might want to look into. The support that is accessible by all means, please go for it because raising special needs children is not a walk in the park. So um, if there's any parents here listening to me or um, watching the replay, I say a big well done to you. And um, I pray that God will continue to strengthen and you know um release grace for the race for the journey because it's a journey indeed thank you so much everyone for joining our next session okay let me put out her handle let me put out her handle that's um child expert ng so that's how on Instagram, child expert on child experts.ng on Instagram. So please follow her child expert um, dot ng on Instagram at child expert at child expert dot ng. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining this first session. And um, we're coming back at 7.45 p.m. Our next session is at 7.45 p.m. And we're going to be talking about a very important topic, you know, how you can nurture um, a, a positive relationship with your child. We all know the connection, all right, is the bedrock of a parent-child relationship, effective communication. So let's be back at 7.45 p.m. where we'll be listening to Pauline Lehman um joining us from the uk and she will be uh, divulging a lot of quality information to us thank you so much everyone for joining please share this video a lot of parents are in this position please share this video um adebola session had the highest number of views you know um i think she was with us two years ago or last year I know that a lot of parents need this information. So please share the video and I'll see you again at 7.45 p.m. Thank you. God bless you. Bye for now. Wow.
There's an outpouring of abundance, of abundance, new doors have been opened, the land, it is green, a new grace has been released, the glory, the glory of The blessing is here. It's all here. Lift up your hands, come on. The glory of the ladder is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. All here. There's another flow. Oh, 